this position, black played queen b8. Why? Nobody knows. It looks like it defends his bishop. Yeah? Yeah. So if white plays d takes e5, the bishop on a7 is defended. Yeah? Makes sense? Right. And Maxime played queen c1. Does anybody know why? I, I know why, so call on me. Yeah. To pull a battery on the h6 pawn? Yeah, he made a battery on the h6 pawn. And black agreed and played queen c8. And now it's symmetrical. Okay. And now probably white's winning, even though nothing has been traded. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, queen c8 is a mistake for the reasons you gave. Affect the battery at all. Yeah, he just took the pawn. Yeah. So if he takes on h6, which is the only refutation, which he did not do, and then I take. The idea is um, this knight's not defended because it's not. Right? So if it was my move, I would play knight f5, threatening mate, and then you would take my knight, and I would take your bishop, and you lose your piece back. Right? Yeah. And if you decide you don't want that to happen, you have an issue. If you move your knight on f6, then I play knight h5 and you resign. Because I beat you on g7. So you need your knight here to defend against knight h5, but you can't defend your knight because you can't. So there's no defense to knight f5, which is very strange. Okay, or as I like to say, knight f5. <laughs> okay. Now, I don't know if his opponent expected bishop h6, or he's like, okay, I gotta deal with this. And this is actually very funny. When you teach really beginning kids, and they make the same moves every move, they play symmetrically, e45, and whatever white does, black does the same move. So it's really funny that black did that here, like the next few moves. I haven't seen that in the Grandmaster game. So he played bishop h3. He played bishop g5, pinning the knight. And I, you weren't here, but I told the other people that this was a very strange part of the game because um, black just imitated white every move, which is very strange. He played bishop g4. Okay, and then after bishop f6, he played... G6. How does that imitate him? Yeah, bishop f3. <laughs> right, yeah. No, it's funny. Yeah, very interesting position. So, black wants to attack too. But, you know, not just white. Black wants to play queen g4 and move his knight in and start attacking. Yeah, very interesting. So he played knight f5 or... Knight. Yeah. So the problem is, I think, if you play the, like, the obvious move, taking a rook, because taking a rook looks good, I think that might lose. Obviously, if black's going to take back, then it's good to take a rook. But if he mates you, it's probably not. I'm not even sure what the best move for black is here, but I see a couple moves that I like. Anybody? No, nobody? Uh, queen... G4? Queen G4 gets in the area, but there's no big threat at that point. Knight H4? Knight H4 I think is a good move. I was preferring Knight F4, but maybe Knight H4 is better. Also the Bishop G2. I'm not... I don't know what to do here. It seems good for black. Although, yeah, knight h4, knight f4, yeah. So he played knight f5, which blocks out the queen. And so, yeah. And then he played knight f4 because I said that black made the same. Yeah. And that makes sense because if, if white starts getting his queen in here, that's probably not good. And if I play bishop g7 and queen h7. Yeah. And he took on e5, which black cannot take on e4. And now, obviously, white's threatening queen takes this so he took back and then bishop e5 and yeah the problem is black can't really replicate what white's doing now because white's bishop is actually on this diagonal so that's you don't want to play bishop takes e4 because your pieces are all hanging in. yeah and again I, you can't you can't let white play queen to g5 because that's too checkmate -y. so he played knight e2 check obviously he took and if you take the rook, I'm guessing a lot of moves win, but that looks pretty winning. Yeah, that's a lot of guys on here, King. Yeah, M feels pretty good at that. So he played, rook takes e5, and he took. And now, well, white's up a pawn, which isn't the most important. I think the most important is the knife on f5. 
It's a pretty big knife. Okay, also whites up a knight. I tricked everybody, no? I didn't trick anybody? So here black should resign, but black played a really tricky move instead of resigning, a move that you, none of you would play. And if you played it, I'd be like, what are you doing playing that? But your name's not as cool as his, so. What's the trickiest move you can play? I think I would resign if I was playing MVL. Queen I, takes? Yeah, I did resign when I played MVL. So yeah. yeah, queen takes, yeah. Now it's opposite bishop, so it's a draw. Okay, and then like this rook's coming here, and we got this action going on. This bishop seems sort of stupid. Yeah. Okay, so he played queen g5, because he has a queen and the other guy doesn't. That's a good idea. Rook d5, bishop e4. Yeah. And then it was funny, he took the rook, because that's the easiest way to win. And that's like way too winning. The questions I have about this game, but I'm not there, I can't ask him, is like, when he played bishop h6, was he expecting bishop h3? Or that surprised him. And when he played bishop g5, he probably expected bishop g4, right? And then did he know he was going to play knight f5? I mean, because these are really good moves. And it's funny, basically white's a tempo ahead, just like you're playing symmetrical chess, e4, e5, and the Petrov or whatever. Like, if this was black's move, black could play knight f4. And then the white queen is out of the, out of the game. So it's sort of funny that he uses his extra move to play knife f5. That's why there's no knife f4. What's also funny is, in this position, if you asked me which bishop is better, this one of these two bishops, I mean, this looks clearly better on a7. This one's blocked. But actually, by playing bishop e5, you make bishop e4 look really stupid. And so now bishop e5 is a good move, and it probably isn't a good move for the black bishop is on b8. So it allows these tactics that you don't have because the e5 pawn is defending the knight, and that's why MVL played d takes e5 here. It's a very hard idea to see to take this twice when this is hanging and this is hanging. And so I tell all my students, you look at all checks and captures. And so when your opponent captures something, you should never say, I didn't see that. That's the only thing you should see. So when MVL played bishop takes h6, his opponent should have seen that coming. Maybe he did. And, if black, and black played bishop takes h3, should have seen that coming. All these moves that are captures, which is almost every move. Well, you calculate that. You don't calculate queen a8, because that's a random legal move. If queen a8 wins, then the guy's better than you. What are you do? But if the guy captures something, you say, I didn't calculate that, that's, it, you, you have to stop doing that. Now, of course, if you had to calculate lots of variations every move, your flag would fall. But you don't have to. In fact, there were no tactics before this move. No, nothing was taken. So they were moving around, and they have very symmetrical. These are all the same, right? We got a lot of the same here. And when after queen c1, queen c, and now this is symmetrical, and, and this sacrificing on h6 is symmetrical on h3, but it's white's move. So when you have a symmetrical position, and it's your opponent's move, that could be good in the end game, could be Zugzwan, but not a no game. The guy gets to do it first. So it's amazing that the guy kept playing the same move he did. He did every move. Same move. I'd never seen that before in two good players, that every move was the same. I was shocked. And then and now the symmetry is broken because the, these bishops are on different squares. And so e5 and e4, or e4 and e5, are defended better by white than by black. And this doesn't really matter in this position. It looks good.